Hi, my name is Kip Hacking, and I'm from Brigham Young University. Uh, the title of my talk today is Undergraduate ROV Outreach. First of all, I'd like to thank Kelly Cooper and the Office of Naval Research for all the support they provided. This project would not have been uh, possible without them. So, first I'm going to outline what I'm going to talk about uh, in this talk today. So first of all, I'm going to talk to you and show you how there's a need for STEM uh, related programs and there's a need for STEM and then after that I'm going to show how STEM outreach programs are effective and they really do promote STEM and then after that, I'm going to show that there's federal funding out there that you can fund programs and then I'm going to share an example program uh, the one that we did which is called Sea Perch. Uh, we don't claim to be experts on Sea Perch or under, uh, underwater robotic programs uh, it's just one that we did, and we found a lot of success, and we really want to share our story with you. And we would love in the future, you know, to get your support and your feedback and build will make it almost like a group project. We're all able to collaborate and share and help each other do this. And then I'm going to show you some resources that we have. So STEM, what does STEM stand for? STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. There are 26 million STEM jobs in the U.S., um, and as you can see here on the right, it comprises 20% of all U.S. jobs. So it's very, very important to our economy. Um, over here in 2001, you see that there's 4 million ninth graders that enter high school. Ten years later, in 2011, only 167,000 of them graduate from college in a STEM-related field. The problem is that same year, 317,000 STEM jobs became available. As you can see, we're not producing enough graduates to fill that many jobs. As you can see here on the right, as I just said, there are more jobs available than STEM graduates, which is crazy because if you're non-STEM, it's just the opposite. As you can see on the, on the left, there are 3.6 people fighting over one job. So there's a need for STEM, as we saw before. Now, why aren't kids going into this? Why are they, I mean, not, you know? And so uh, a study done by Raytheon showed that 89% of middle school students would rather do chores than math homework. And only 6% of high school seniors will get a bachelor's degree in a STEM-related field. So we're really lacking in creating STEM majors in the United States. So there's, we see that there's a need for STEM majors and that we're not providing that. The big question is, are STEM outreach programs effective or, or are they just a waste of our time? So here uh, is a study done on FIRST Robotics, which has been around for a while now. They found that uh, the participants who uh, participated in FIRST Robotics were 1.7 times more likely to attend college. That's a lot. Then, once they got in college, they were two times more likely to major in a STEM-related field, and th over three times more likely to major specifically in an engineering field. Once they graduated from college, they found that the, the participants were uh, over two times more likely to, to uh, do, pursue a STEM-related career, and almost four times as likely to do a career specifically in engineering. So as we can see here, yes, out STEM outreach programs are very effective, and they have great results. So. How do you fund programs like this? Uh, Barack Obama said earlier this year, we'll reward schools that develop new partnerships with colleges and employers and create classes that focus on science, technology, engineering, and math. The skills today's employers are looking for to fill jobs right now and in the future. So, even though we're seeing major cutbacks with the budget uh, federally, you can see here in 2012, this is the budget that was enacted. And then here's the proposed budget for 2014. This is a 6.7 increase. So even though we're having cutbacks on everything else, we're still pushing STEM education. Uh, the big changes are we got a hundred, there's $120 million NSF just got for the cause program. It's that whole program is, uh, is for undergraduate retention. They're seeing so many times that kids will come into college, they'll major in a STEM-related field, 
but halfway through they'll go this is too hard i don't want to do this and they'll quit so they're trying to retain more of those undergraduates in the programs and then also there's 300 million dollars was just given to the education department to redesign high school education and create partnerships with colleges and employers now i'm going to show you uh, the program we did we have utah underwater robotics we're the first one to ever do a, uh, so an underwater robotics program in uh, utah in the state of utah which is a landlocked state so how it worked is we got a grant from the office of naval research we work with them already for lots of projects we do out of our research lab so it was a natural fit the idea of our of our grant of this grant was that we would work with 10 middle schools 250 students and we would bring the sea perch uh, underwater robotic program as you can see down here in the video it's looping they would build little underwater rovs in the classroom while uh, there would be 60 undergraduate students in an instrumentation class taught by professor tad truscott and they'd be building instruments that could be attached to these simple rovs um, and they would also be going into the classrooms and mentoring these middle school students so the program we chose to use was Sea Perch. It's managed by the Office of Naval Research. Uh, it's called a remotely operated vehicle, or commonly referred to in industry as ROV. It's a low-cost kit, $155. I mean, a lot of you may know many times uh, robotic kits will cost uh, over $1,000 or at least a couple hundred dollars to build. And it's using very, very simple supplies, uh, PVC frame. Um, for the frame, it's using hobby motors, double pull, double throw switches, an Ethernet cable uh, to be to control and provide power from the surface. So that's what the students built. Now, the undergraduates built instruments that then could be put on these ROVs, and the students, these K-12 students, could build themselves. Uh, so as you can see here on the left, we had one student build an iPad propulsion control system. It had an underwater camera on it, and it could control the motor speed using an, any iOS device. This is super exciting for middle school students, the idea of being able to take their iPod or their iPhone and be able to control an underwater robot that they built. And it was relatively low cost. It was only $125 to do so. And uh, all the designs on how to build this and videos to build it were all put online on a website for uh, middle school and other students to look at and view and get ideas of how to build it themselves. On the right here is a hydrophone. As you know, it's an underwater microphone. This allowed students to get a simple introduction to microcontrollers. And also gave them, uh, you know, very, very inexpensive for $50 to build some type of device that could collect data themselves and really go in their backyard and throw the ROV in a pond and start collecting data immediately. Uh, other examples of instruments. On the left, we have a turtle shell cleaner. This kid had a crazy idea. He wanted to make some type of a motor and uh, almost like a, a device that would suck and clean uh, the back of turtle shells. It would attach it and then clean the back of the turtle shell. So his big project was great for young, young students because they were able to see how, hey, even though we live in Utah, we don't have the ocean nearby. He was able to create partnerships with a local aquarium and go in and try out his, his instrument and work with them. And he also got BYU TV to film the project, which brought a lot of great publicity to this project. And his uh, instrument only cost $25. On the right, another great instrument. We had uh, an instrument that could monitor water quality by looking at light, by having light and pressure sensors. And the then could measure the water quality at different depths. And this is $110. So the big parts of our program was that the undergraduates would go into the class, these local middle school classrooms, and actually mentor the students that were building these robots, which was great for the teachers, because many middle school teachers are very intimidated by the idea of their students using soldering irons and PC pipe cutters and also how to, you know, do simple robotics. So this was great. They got immediate support. It was also great. One of the big feedback we got from the uh, undergraduate students in the classroom was that this was finally like a service project where they were able to go out and serve and help their community where they were actually able to use their engineering skills because so many times they would go out and do this great service but they weren't really able to use those skills they're learning in the classroom uh, you know the idea of like you know they're able to see see one do one teach one they were able to see these concepts in the classroom they were able to do it themselves and then they were able to go out and teach it and the idea is the mentoring cycle our goal you know is eventually that these students that these middle school students that were in our program 
will eventually go on to be engineers and go into middle school, and go into uh, an engineering related field, and that they'll come back and a mentor on middle school students, and it'll create this cycle that continue for years. Uh, outreach in the K-12 classrooms. Uh, teachers were trained at the beginning of the school year. There are two to three kids uh, per kid. They built the ROV for 16 weeks, and the undergraduates assisted the teachers in the classroom, and it ended at the end of the year with a big ROV competition where the students had an obstacle course, all in a pool, they had, uh, had an obstacle course, and they had to pick up dive rings. All right, so in last year, uh, this year, in 2013, we had the first Utah ROV competition to ever be held. There were 70 middle school teams, and the competition consisted of an ROV mission. As you can see here on the right, they had to throw their ROV in, and they had to do an obstacle course, pick up some dive rings. And then they also had to make a poster to present their ideas. Uh, 60 of the undergraduates that built the instruments came and acted as judges. And then we also had a local engineering company boost. It was like a small career fair where students could go and talk and interact and see what type of jobs are out there after after college. After college and So the results of the competition, we had 250 participants, 70 volunteers. We had seven companies come out. And we had five news agencies, local news agencies, come and highlight the stories of, of this project. So the winners, it was a composite score. We had ROV mission, and then they had a poster, and then we had a questionnaire for bonus points. So what this did is we asked them questions like, what company produces diamonds, or what company uh, mines this? And the students then had to go talk to the different companies and figure out who did what. And this was a great way to get them to interact with the local companies. Uh, the fastest time was 2 minutes and 32 seconds. We gave them 10 minutes. We thought they weren't going to be able to do it, but obviously these kids are smart, and in the future we will need to make the competition a lot harder. The response of the undergraduates. Ian said, The most rewarding part of Seaperch for me was seeing the excitement it brought to kids' lives. They went from having sour attitudes to being ecstatic about engineering. Uh, Chris said, Love being able to use my engineering skills I learned to help excite middle schoolers about science. The responses of the middle schoolers were, uh, Brianna here said, everything went wrong, but it was cool because we were able to fix it because we knew how to build it. Uh, the retention in our program, 90% uh, of the schools involved are participating again this year, and we actually increased by 20% of the schools that are involved. The community response, uh, Monty Polson, who was a, a teacher at one of the schools said, at first they were intimidated by building robots, but once they got started with it, they've just gone gangbusters. They're doing it in their bathtub. They're doing it anywhere they can find water. Uh, as I said before, tons of local news, BYU News, KSL, Deseret, Daily Herald, Fox 13. And because of all this news and publicity, a lot of people in the community start, uh, took a note of this and were very excited to get involved in the future. And also because of this, we actually got new sponsors, U.S. Synthetic and Go Engineer, that now fund our program. Okay, what type of resources are out there? Um, if you go to www.rov.byu.edu, we have redesigned on our own kit. Uh, it used to be $155. We now have a $30 per kit so that we can bring that cost down. We also have curriculum here on the left in bold. Those are different uh, lessons that teachers and uh, can use to talk about while they're building the RVs with students. And on the right, those are lessons that we would love to have made. So if you guys want to get involved, we'd love to have your help in making those. We can put them on there. And then also, we have all the instruments that were built by the that were built with build directions by the uh, undergraduate students. Uh, the goal of our program is we uh, we'd love to have our students start collecting real data. So many times we saw that kids are building these really cool robotics just to simulate research, the, uh, collecting data and doing research, and why not actually have them go out and do something? So the idea is, at first, their first year, they learn how to build their simple robot, they put it in a pool, they practice, they simulate research, and then after that, the second year, they go and they start doing a cleanup project in their local community where they actually go out and do something, and then their third year, they finally have enough experience they can build a really nice ROV with good instruments, we partner them up with some type of research with some researcher, and we have them go out and start collecting data and actually doing real good in their local community and help uh, researchers. I'd like to big a big thank you again to the Office of Naval Research and Kelly Cooper, and then I'd also like to thank U.S. Synthetic and Go Engineer along with Blendtec for all the support that they have provided financially and also with volunteers. 
Uh, any questions? Again, here is our website. And if you would like to go on there, you, we have lots of resources for you guys. Thanks.